Okay, so we're going to assume that this has completed its uh, um, uh, stage for um, uh, checking the B value. We're only at 0.8, and we need to be, uh, ASTM says 1 plus or minus 0 0.05, so 0.95 or above. So we obviously need to infil infiltrate the sample with pressurized water to remove the air voids that are still in the sample. Okay, so we're going to end the test stage. You sure? Okay. Then we're going to start the test stage. And then again, because we didn't have 0.95, we, we don't skip to go to consolidation. We have to back pressure saturate now. So we're going to go to saturation, back pressure increment, click OK. And again, follow the instructions on the screen. Step one, make sure the volume change unit is online. Okay. So it tells you what to do. So you walk over to this volume change unit. The valve on the left side is on bypass currently, horizontal. We want to saturate, so we want to move it vertical up. And the valve on the right side is currently at off. We want to move that horizontal to online. That's all we have to do. Step one, done. Step two, adjust the back pressure valve to 8.98 PSI. Where does 8.98 PSI come from? Well, that is our back pressure differential value of one or of cell pressure minus one, meaning the inside back pressure has to be one PSI less than the confining pressure, which is currently at 9.98. So we want that back pressure target to be 8.98. Okay. So we increase this monitoring the back pressure, which is right here, back pressure, transducer. Walk over to the tri test fit or the tri flex two panel. Turn off the cell pressure. It doesn't change anything with the pressure that's going in the confining pressure. It just turns it off to the monitor. Turn on the back pressure. You can increase this. So right at it's supposed to be 8.98 or 9. Turn the valve up to pressure. Again, this is ballpark figure. Walk over to the computer screen and make sure that you're reading right about 9. We're a little higher than 9, but it's okay as long as we're not higher than the cell pressure. And then again, you want to make sure that you have time for things to expand and equalize. Take a minute or two and let the, let the tubing and everything expand to its appropriate um, uh, equalized state. We're still good with nine, a little over 9 PSI. So step three is, after the countdown, again a countdown, open the back pressure valve. This is the back pressure transducer labeled right here. This is the back pressure valve. So once the, the countdown hits zero, open that valve. Okay. Hit continue. Start test countdown, five, four, three, two, one, then a double beat. And now afterwards, open the back pressure valve. And what, the, what we're doing here is we're forcing water down through, through the volume change transducer, all the way around in through the top cap and to infiltrate the sample all the way through. And we're waiting for that pressure to be equal to the pore water pressure or very close to equal. Because this state here, this stage now is allowing water to infiltrate those air void spaces. And once we have equilibrium, the top should be about the same as the bottom, which means the back pressure should be about the same as the pore water pressure. Okay. The left, the left uh, graph here is the volume change. That's the amount of water in cubic inches that's flowing through the sample. The right graph here, which is a little odd in the beginning, is just the pore water pressure. Now this will eventually rise and equalize. Now that's what we're going to wait. Now it's a waiting game. This can take up to a week to saturate. So we're going to wait for both of these graphs to stabilize and then we'll move on to the next to, to check the B value again. Okay. And if you want to leave it overnight, you don't have to have this on here. You click OK. If you click OK, it's still recording data. Go back to the main screen, you can go to exit, get out of DS7 completely. You can turn the computer completely off. As long as you keep the power to the ADU on, keep that test running and you have that scan light, 
in this convert light flashing. You're always monitoring data and checking data. And then tomorrow morning or the next day or three hours from now, you can turn everything back on. You'll the, the data you will communicate with the with the software, download all of that data that's recorded, and you can check and see where we are. And we'll do that next. Okay. So the ADU basically always.